You're tuned in to the Investing for Beginners podcast. Finally, step-by-step premium investment guidance for beginners. Led by Andrew Sather and Dave Ahern to decode industry jargon, silence crippling confusion, and help you overcome emotions by looking at the numbers. Your path to financial freedom starts now. All right, folks. Well, welcome to Investing for Beginners podcast. This is episode 40. Andrew Sather and I are going to talk about The Richest Man in Babylon, a book that was written by George S. Clayson. This was written back, I believe, in the 30s. Is that correct? Hey, man, I don't have a... I'm not <laughs> a Wikipedia. I'm the wrong person to ask. <laughs> Sorry I, about that. I read okay. the books and hopefully glean something out of them. <laughs> the details uh, will leave to Wikipedia. Okay, fair enough. So... We're not exactly sure when the book was written without having it in front of us. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah. but uh, it's uh, it's one of the easiest books to read and it is amazingly insightful and it has a lot of great advice about personal finance. And it was actually one of the first books I read when I really started digging into investing and kind of personal finance. And again, the name of the book was The Richest Man of Babylon. And we're going to talk about the seven cures for a lean purse. So he has seven different cures that Andrew and I are going to go through and talk a little bit about. So I'm going to have Andrew go ahead and start us off with number one. Yeah, I mean, I think everybody out there who wants to complain about finances sees himself in like a tough situation and wants to crawl out of it should definitely read this book and listen to this episode over and over again because a lean purse, I mean, you can just see that imagery and when you hear those words and it's very powerful and I love the ancient you know these this like very ancient myth- mythological kind of theme that he put to this book so and yes it was one that I also recommended I, I recommended my seven steps to understanding the stock market I have a, a post where I recommend various investing books and this is definitely up there it was one of the first that I also read and just picked it up probably didn't put it down until i finished reading through it's it's an easy read and it's super super insightful and it, it can really inspire you because then you feel like you know what to do next because that's the thing about a lot of these concepts we like to talk about on the podcast if you'll notice dave and i will focus more on timeless principles rather than you know what's what was hot on cnbc yesterday i think There's certain principles and and fundamental philosophies and foundations that really will work no matter if it's 2017 or if it's 3017, you know what I mean? It's it's just one of those things, and and we've seen it. Like you said, I think it was the 1930s. I was flipping through the book. Looks like he has versions from late 1920, 1930s, and 1950s even, so I'm sure there's plenty of versions of this book. So this is something that, you know, they they say when you talk about books, the longer, the older the book is, the more valuable it probably is. Because if people are still talking about it today, that means it's really stood the test of time. And The Intelligent Investor is one of those. The Richest Man in Babylon, this book, is one of those. So pay attention. Don't take these cures for a lean purse lightly. This is some really good stuff. So now that I've on a, com- on a complete tangent, let me answer what you said. Number one, the first point is start thy purse to fattening. Love the purse metaphor. Yeah. You kind of see this advice if you talk to anybody who wants to talk about being successful. I mean, obviously, if you want to make money, you got to have money and a great way to get money as a beginner is to get yourself a good career, get yourself a good paying job, (coughs) equip yourself with skills and education to be able to basically create an income for yourself. And then from there make more income. So to start off with this, this number one point is 
make sure you have that foundation down. And you hear this a lot with a lot of the personal finance gurus. I know I used to listen to Dave Ramsey a lot when I was first starting out. He gets phone calls from people all around the world and, and they tune into his radio show and a lot of them say, Hey man, I'm in, I'm in a ton of debt and you know, I make like 25,000 a year and I've got like 50 grand in debt. Like how do I break out of this? And it seems to always be this theme where it's like, dude, you got to pick up a second job or you got to go back to school. You got to get that income up because you can live a frugal lifestyle. You can do all those, all the right things. Uh, you could try to make more money in the stock market, all those kinds of things. But if, if you're starting from a small base, you're not going to be able to overcome and, and make the kind of gains and, and profits that, that you need to have like a base source of capital and a base income to start from so that's obviously number one is you got to get a decent income you have to make a decent living for yourself and so to do that in today's world um, sometimes that means getting a degree sometimes that means having a certification or just having relevant work experience in a field that pays well and I think that's really the crucial part here is having skills in, in things and industries that pay well. Uh, you can be the best, you know, artist in the world, but if there's no market for your art, you're not going to make any money. So it doesn't matter how much, how much more skilled in the art you become. Uh, you either need to become a better marketer or find somebody who can market that art for you. Um, just, trying to really focus all on one thing when it's not a profitable endeavor is really going to have diminishing returns. So I think uh, in a long way, that's really saying like, make sure you have the basics un- understood, make sure you have the groundwork set to really create wealth for yourself. And I think that's kind of common sense nowadays. Yep, exactly. So that's, that's very well put. So moving on to the second lesson, Control thy expenditures. So the main lesson of this parable is to control your spending. So if you can learn to live below your means, it will enable you to begin to accumulate wealth. So, you know, he says in the book that we need to budget our expenses so that you may uh, you can make money to pay for your necessities, to pay for your enjoyments and to gratify your worthwhile desires without spending more than 90 percent of your earnings. So the key here is not to deny yourself. And Ramit Sethi is one of my favorite writers. He talks a lot about that in his books and in his blogs when he talks about budgeting and kind of living a, you know, a rich lifestyle. And, you know, he talks a lot about, you know, is it really worth, you know, saving that Starbucks for, you know, trying to save more money? You know, it kind of goes back to what Andrew was talking about is, you know, learning to earn more money, whether that's making your money work for you, i.e. dividends, which Andrew and I talk about all the time, or whether it's just earning more money, whether it's a side job or whether it's just earning more money in your career. But controlling the expenditures is also key here because as you learn to earn more, it doesn't mean you need to spend more. And that's one of the fallacies. And that's what some people get in trouble with, and I saw it all the time at the bank, you know, because they earned more money, they spent more money and they didn't learn to control their budgeting. So that's really what it comes down to. So, you know, you don't need to deny yourself to get where you want to go. You just need to learn to control the spending so that you can you know, adjust for what you want and still not deny yourself because there's nothing worse than, you know, saving for 50 years to, you know, have a great retirement and you're bitter and angry because you denied yourself all those years. I mean, that's not what life is about. We're all here one time. We only get this one life and you should enjoy it, but you have to also be under control about it as well. Yeah. That whole lifestyle inflation thing, it's easy to get trapped in, right? Mm -hmm. Very, very much true. Yep. Yeah. Control. It's key. Number three, make my gold multiply. Well, if you're listening to this podcast, then you're already halfway there, right? This is what we're all about. This is the investing. This is putting your work, putting your money to work for you so you don't have to work for money for the rest of your life. Uh, The the whole concept behind that, obviously, is 
You want to make money while you sleep. You want to... Basically, you want to accumulate assets. <coughs> the rich accumulate assets, and that asset creates an income for them. Uh, the people who aren't wealthy have to rely on paychecks, and obviously we see the downfalls of that every time there's a recession, every time there's a, a ton of layoffs in the bear market and the economy is just generally bad. You see unemployment go up and you see a lot of people have to either dip into their savings to keep afloat, um, get into a lot of debt to keep afloat or, you know, in, in some of the even more terrible situations, you have people who have to sell their homes, they get foreclosed on and they really just have, a really rough go of it. Whereas if you hold assets and if you can get to a point of financial freedom, which is the goal of this whole podcast, we're hoping that everybody listening can make a journey and eventually reach that point. If you have financial freedom and you have these assets, they will pay you an income regardless of what happens to the economy, regardless if unemployment goes up. Assuming you have investments in companies that don't go bankrupt, which is everything that we try to do with our, you know, with my products and services, everything we try to share here on the podcast. You will still receive that income because business generally continues to run. Uh, yes, your, the value of your investments may go down as a bear market hits and as the economy shrinks, but as somebody who has financial freedom, you are hopefully you know, the, the whole definition of that means being able to live off those paychecks and those dividends and, and the investment income. So it really, at the end of the day, doesn't matter what the value is because you're still receiving that income day in and day out. And so that's kind of the gold standard. That's why we like to focus so much and really put out all this content for you guys is because it's obviously, you know, it's, it's one point out of seven in this list, but it's obvious, there's obviously a lot involved and there's just so many options. But the fact that you're here, the fact that you're listening, the fact that you have enough of an interest to pursue this means that you are putting yourself in the right path because obviously this is one way to, even if you have what he calls a lean purse today, you can take these steps to make your purse full later on and Making your gold multiply through investments is definitely a great way to do that. Hey you, what's the best way to get started in the market? Download Andrew's free ebook at stockmarketpdf.com. You won't regret it. Exactly. That's exactly right. And that's what I took away from reading the book as well. It's really kind of the angle that I that I got from it. And, you know, speaking of when you start to fatten your purse, you know, an important thing is number four, which we're going to talk about next is guard thy treasures from loss. And <clears throat> there's kind of two ways of looking at this. One is insurance. Uh, it's kind of a necessary evil. Nobody likes it. Nobody likes to pay for it. Uh, probably the only people that like it are insurance salesmen. But it's a necessary evil. We have to have it, you know. So as you create those assets and as you build your wealth, you need to have more insurance to make sure that you do not lose those in case there's an accident, there's something happens with our our health, any sort of unseen, you know, circumstance that could cause us to lose that wealth that we've worked so hard to build. Uh, the other aspect of that is this is right up Andrew's out. Uh, Andrew's at, Avenue is bankruptcies. You know, his uh, value trap indicator, as we've talked about before, is a amazing tool to help you find great stocks that are not going to go bankrupt. And, you know, bankruptcies are one of the absolute worst ways to lose all that money that you've worked so hard to earn. And that's why we've talked about some of these companies like Tesla and Snapchat uh, recently, is because we feel like those are, you know, maybe not today but they are prime candidates for something that could happen like that. And, you know, with the tools that Andrew has created, you can help prevent, you know, these losses from your portfolio in such an easy way. And, 
you know, it's an amazing tool. And I know we've talked a lot about it in the past, but it really is an, a great way to help guard your treasures from loss. And that is one of the biggest ways to make sure you make money is by making sure you don't lose money. You know, Warren Buffett's talked about this, you know, in the past, and I've mentioned this before is, you know, one of his famous parables is rule number one, don't lose money. Rule number two, don't forget rule number one. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it seems simple and easy to think about, but if you don't lose money, you will never lose money. I mean, it's just, you know, duh. But anyway, uh, I digress. So, I, you know, I think, you know, between the insurance and having a tool that can help you avoid bankruptcies or, you know, a losing stock in the stock market is critical to maintaining your wealth. Yeah, it's margin of safety with an emphasis <clears throat> on safety. Exactly. And by being a value investor and, and buying value stocks, that's what you're going to naturally do. And that's how you can craft and, and guide your investments towards basically when you lose less money, you compound at a much higher rate and a quicker rate. And that just exponentially becomes more powerful as the time goes on. Exactly. Point number five, make of thy dwelling a profitable investment. Now, I probably shouldn't be speaking about this considering I don't have any real estate of my own. Um, but obviously he's talking about thy dwelling is, is the place you live. And so one way we've seen recently is this trend to do like the whole Airbnb thing. I think it's pretty cool for people who have extra bedrooms or maybe like a shed to get on Airbnb and, and rent out a room. But I think it, just in general, you can build wealth by buying a piece of real estate. And if it's somewhere that you plan to settle for decades anyways, why not keep that rent, you know, I mean, it becomes a mortgage payment after, and it's no longer rent payment, right? So not only are you paying yourself, but you're keeping that payment consistent through the 15 years or 30 years or however long you make your mortgage. Um, an easy way to up your assets and up your, your retirement portfolio, obviously. And so why not do it, I guess? Uh, I have my reasons for not wanting real estate now or anytime in the near future. I used to be on the Money Tree podcast and one of the panelists there, Miranda Marquette, uh, is very, has a very similar mindset that I do as she had a bad experience with real estate. And so we both really prefer to rent for various reasons. A lot of those overlap, but. For a lot of people out there, uh, if you can get into a piece of real estate, you're going to stay there a long time. It becomes a net positive for you from a financial standpoint, and you are doing it within your means. And as a good quarter of your, you know, a, a good percentage in, in terms of your budget and in terms of your overall spend, then I think it's obviously a great move financially, and it can move you closer towards reaching that financial freedom goal. Yep, exactly. So, you know, I'm I'm kind of right there with you with the whole owning a house, and you know, I just for for my reasons, I just I've chosen not to. Uh, I've seen too many people in the banking world that were house poor. In other words, you know, the house is a great asset, but when it prevents you from a, being able to do other things to invest for your future, then it can be you know it can be a real drag. And you know, if you're spending way more on your your mortgage that doesn't allow you to enjoy your life, then is it really a good investment? I guess that's really kind of the question I would ask. And that's probably a conversation for another time. Uh, number six, to ensure a future income. So this is something that's real big to my dear to my heart is setting aside money during our working years to ensure that we have enough money for our retirement. You know, today we got so many vehicles to do that. We've talked about this uh, in, just recently with the 401k. We have, you know, Roth IRAs, traditional IRAs. There's so many different ways that you can set aside money. And it's it's critical that you start doing that now. And the earlier, the better. You know, you know, Andrew has an amazing advantage because he's much younger than I am. And he has these, you know, many, many, many decades to compound his wealth. And we've talked a lot about the, the power of compounding it. I want to give you a little known fact here. Benjamin Franklin, uh, he left a thousand pounds in a trust, which he bequeathed to the cities of Boston and Philadelphia with the, the, the provision that the money was to remain untouched for 200 years. 
the money in the trust grew to two million dollars for Boston and five million for Philadelphia. This is all without a single contribution during those two hundred years. Amazing, isn't that? That's just that's just ridiculous. So he put a thousand dollars in a trust. We had to grow for two hundred years, and it grew to two million and five million respectively. So that's just that's just amazing, and I think that just illustrates you know the power of compounding. And if you are diligent and you are listening to this podcast, this is something that obviously is an interest for you. And I can't encourage you enough to start now. The, America is has such a huge crisis looming with the retirement uh, problem, and you know people have, for whatever reason, it's become a situation now where. People think that Social Security is going to be their retirement, and it just ain't so. Uh, it's just whether it's going to be there or not is, you know, that's a whole other conversation. But the fact is that it's not a lot of money. You know, even if it's there for you when you retire, it's not a lot of money. And I saw this firsthand again at the bank every single day. You know, people that are living off of Social Security and are making, they're living off of $580 a month or $1,000 a month or $1,200 a month. And you think about what you make now and then you try to think about how am I going to live off that $1,200 a month? And that includes having to pay rent or mortgage, a car, God forbid your car dies, how do you go buy a new one? I mean, there's just so many other things that go into this. And the fact that our society has not embraced setting aside money and using the power of compounding is is just such a shame and it's it's kind of criminal that the government and our education system has not just beaten us in into our heads that this is something that we need to do and we're such a live now you know enjoy the moment society that we don't think about what what's going to happen 10, 20, 30 years from now, and we have to. And that's why Andrew and I are so passionate about this, and that's why we talk about this so much, is that this is how you can, you know, be successful with your finances. Oh, yeah, 100%. Um, it is a tragedy. And I really implore you if, if you, if you don't really get the power of compounding interest, type into Google whenever you get a chance, compound interest calculator. Play with the years, you know, try to set maybe how many years you have until you retire. If you're close to retirement age already, consider that the life expectancy just continues to grow as all these medical innovations have come out. And so, you know, put in a couple decades, three, four decades, however, however many you want. Put in a, a dollar amount that might seem like a goal, a future goal or, or something that's maybe somewhat reasonable and put in 10% a year for the stock market average and just see, visually see it for yourself because this is a podcast, we can't do it for you. I've done it on the blog. But see for yourself just how fast and how great the money grows to. I mean, to turn $1,000 into $2 million like that, I can only imagine if if it was invested in like value stocks. Um, I imagine they probably invested in something very conservatively, but if it was invested in value stocks instead of that, for 200 years or even just the market in general, it, it would be astronomical. So do that and, and really understand that that's your path to, f to freedom in the future is to, is to utilize that. And there's a lot of power there. The Last Cure for a Lean Purse by George S. Clayson. He says, increase thy ability to earn. And this is so key. I mean, I have so much to say about entrepreneurship that I'm not going to today because I don't even <laughs> want to get started. But it's I'd, I'd argue that it's it's maybe even more important than investing if you are looking to. I guess if you have big dreams, you know, I think investing anybody who has an average income, uh, maybe a, an average career, I think they can become a millionaire for sure, just, just through prudent long-term compounding and all the things we talk about on our podcast. I think the, the people who maybe want to do that at, at an accelerated rate, you know, if they want to retire really, really early or if they want to, let's say, be like in the tens of, of millions instead of just a couple million. I think entrepreneurship is where that is and increasing the ability to earn doesn't just 
it, 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 it doesn't just stop at like entrepreneurship. I mean, if, if you want to hustle and, and go out there and, and there's just a million different ways to make an extra bit of money, picking up a second job, driving an Uber, doing the, opening your home to an Airbnb, you know, doing some freelance writing, uh, reaching out to other influential entrepreneurs that you see and be like, hey, how can I work for you? Or how can I do what you've done? There's so many ways to just literally get off the couch and make more money for yourself. And if you can create like a buffer, right, where you have your budget, you have all your expenses that are set. And if you have extra money that's coming in and you can either pay down more debt with that money or put that money straight into the stock market and let it grow having that extra income and having those extra earnings and just putting them all towards your goals are just going to, it's just going to help you in, in such a great way. And when you multiply that with compound interest, <laughs> then you'll, you'll see it happen at an even greater rate. So I think increasing your ability to earn that can apply to what you do outside of your free time. If it means, even getting a raise or a promotion at the job you're at now. What we always talk about, or I know I, I do, is how you need to have money to make money. And the difference between 10% and 11% a year returns on your investment is huge. The difference between being able to invest $100 a month and $1,000 a month is even huger. And that's terrible grammar, and I don't care at this point. <laughs> but honestly... Again, if you want to do a compound interest calculator, play with numbers, maybe look what like a, a pizza delivery job would, what that extra income per month would do over a 40 year time period. Do that and understand that it is such an empowering <laughs> idea and is an, such an empowering <laughs> discovery to have when you can understand just how much opportunity that there is today with the internet, with how easy it is to open a brokerage account with how much how many resources and, and pieces of information are out there to teach you how to make your money work for you At, when it gets down to it you might realize that the only person who's holding you back is yourself and that's the only person to blame at the end of the day so i think take these seven cures and take them to heart understand that each one is very very important and there's just a lot of wisdom pack in each word that that he wrote and if you haven't read the book I think it's like $6 on Amazon, something ridiculously cheap. It's definitely worth every single penny. And I think it's paid so many dividends for me on a personal standpoint. And it sits on my shelf right next to Intelligent Investor as, as one of my top, if not top two, <coughs> at least top three, top five favorite investing book. I agree. It's one of my favorites and it's so easy to read and it's so insightful and it's so, it's packed with so many, you know, great, you know, nuggets of wisdom. And, you know, it's written in a style that, you know, he, he uses several different characters and he, he talks in parables and it just makes it really enjoyable to read. And you're learning something while you're reading. And it's, it's so cool. And, you know, the last little thing I wanted to tag on about this is, you know, learning is, is really the gateway to so much in life. And with today's age of technology, there are so many opportunities to learn something new that you can put to use either to help you earn more money or to be better at the job that you're already doing or to find an interest that you, you could parlay into a way of making income. And, you know, I think about iTunes University, which is a, a great place where I learned a lot of great stuff about finance. And I know the Ivy League schools have online courses that you could take for free. And, you know, there's just so many opportunities out there to learn. And, you know, one of my favorite things about Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger, these guys are, you know, no matter their age and no matter their wisdom and their intelligence, they are constant learning machines. And they're always reading and trying to better themselves and learn more and more and more. And I think, you know, with that kind of hunger for knowledge, you know, you can't help but get better and, and earn more money. And, uh, it's like a muscle you know, in a way too, because yeah. it, it could atrophy if you don't use it. But I find yeah. whenever I learn something new, it reminds me of 10 things I learned like a year ago. Yeah, exactly. I, I totally agree. All right. So Andrew, I think there was one other thing you wanted to say to the listeners. So what was that? Oh, that's right. Yes. So I got an email today from email subscriber 
And we had mentioned in the past about trailing stops. So we had recommended that you use Yahoo Finance for trailing stops because they had a feature on there where you could put in the stock ticker, put in an alert that you want once the stock reaches that price, and then they'll email you to say, hey, the stock went under this price. Unfortunately, and Dave, I think you know more about this than I do as far as the whole scope of Yahoo Finance, but I know for a fact that they shut down the feature to be able to track your tickers and get email notifications like that. And uh, they've done more. I mean, they shut the whole thing down or something. Uh, They haven't shut. Yeah, they haven't really shut the whole thing down yet, but uh, they have shut down the portfolio feature. So you can't create a portfolio of stocks that you can track, which is what allowed you to, you know, and, uh, you know, enable the trailing stop feature that Andrew and I like so much. So, you know, now if you have a, a watch list or if you have a portfolio, then you wanted to use Yahoo Finance to keep track of it. That feature, unfortunately, is no longer there. And I think it's just kind of a prelude to them basically shutting down the whole finance page. Uh, it hasn't been done yet, but they've really dumbed it down and made it a lot less friendly than it used to be so uh, I don't have a replacement for it yet to be honest with you I don't know if Andrew does uh, but I do not there are um, you do have to pay for them I personally because I I check my portfolio every month I update the stock prices for every single position in my portfolio and I'm looking at, at it every month so to me that's enough because again my trailing stop is very conservative. It's a 25%. Um, I, I do have the potential to lose out on a couple of, maybe I'm a couple of days late on the trailing stop. God forbid we see like 75%, something like unprecedented where it goes 75% in a few days. I, I don't see that happening, but again, you never know. That's just kind of the risks you take. Uh, if you want to go ahead and, and put money towards like a, a trailing stop tracker service, I think that's more power to you. Personally, I would rather just have that money ride in the market. And, you know, these stocks are moving maybe at most 5, 7, 10% at most a month. Um, again, we don't know what the future holds, but that's just a risk I'm willing to take. And I am checking every month with every position. So that's kind of how I'm monitoring my trailing stops. Obviously, at times we're uh, maybe I have more free time or I'm doing more stock market research. I can kind of take the temperature of different things, but it's completely up to you. Um, and like we said, there's, it's unfortunate because that was such a great feature and it, it put everything on autopilot. But as of now, there's nothing like that. If you guys are aware of something that's free, that's very similar to that, definitely shoot us an email. And I think that would be something that we could share with the listeners. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Well, I think that's going to wrap it up for us for tonight. I hope you enjoyed our conversation about the richest man in Babylon and all the great uh, advice that he gave us to help fatten thy purse. So without any further ado, we're going to go ahead and sign off. You guys go out there and find some great intrinsic value and best with a margin of safety. Emphasis on safety. Have a great week and we will talk to you guys next week. We hope you enjoyed this content. Seven Steps to Understanding the Stock Market shows you precisely how to break down the numbers in an engaging and readable way with real-life examples. Get access today at stockmarketpdf.com. Until next time, have a prosperous day. The information contained is for general information and educational purposes only. It is not intended for a substitute for legal, commercial, and or financial advice from a licensed professional. Review our full disclaimer at einvestingforbeginners.com.